a seemingly ingenious idea in the world of motorsport that could have established motorsport as much more of a team sport than an individual one. However, the extravagant plans would eventually amount to nothing. I present to you the story of A1GP. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Sir Meerkats, and welcome back to the Moto Meerkat channel. So today, I shall be your guide through the history of this incredibly ambitious championship. The idea behind it has fascinated me since I stumbled across it on the internet, as I was slightly too young to remember it in person, the first season anyway. Since I am part of the Gen Z squad, where all my other young boys at, I of course immediately searched YouTube for more information on the series, assuming someone such as Aidan Millwood would have uh, made a video on it, but I was surprised to find there was very little explaining the series further. And if you haven't subscribed to Aidan Millwood already, he makes great videos all about history and motorsports and everything like that, so uh, I'll put his link down below, go and enjoy. But you can see my confusion as to how there was no information out there, hence why I decided this would be a perfect video to make. So the story is huge, so I already know this video is going to be many 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 minutes long uh, and it's already taken me weeks to put together and make the script and record all this so it's been a long one so I know I say it every video but if you are ever going to support a video please let it be this one please like it tell me in the comments your thoughts on A1GP whether you'd like to see more motorsport stories in the future that are similar to it and share this video with your mates please guys thank you so much and without further ado let's jump right into this So the series of A1GP was a nation-based concept created in 2003 by Sheikh Maktoum, Hasha Maktoum Al Maktoum of Dubai. He's some sort of royalty, uh, I don't know a huge amount about the intricacies of the UAE royal family, so I'll digress as to his specific position. But somehow, he managed to arrange backing for the series from the FIA, definitely didn't have anything to do with the fact that it was being set up by a literal prince who had extremely deep pockets. Uh, the Sheikh does seem to be a very interesting guy, however, and yes, this is how I shall be referring to him for the rest of the video. So, during the series creation, 30 franchises were made available. So, the series targeted 23 specific nations for those seats and left seven other seats open for nations not initially targeted by the Sheikh. These franchises were the main sticking point, or the USP, as my employability leaders at university like to refer it to, and a USP is the unique selling point of the series. So each A1GP team represented a world nation. Drivers must be of the same nationality as the team they're competing for. However, the rest of the team, including the owner, principal, crew, everyone like that, didn't need to have the same nationality. The nations targeted by the Sheikh were as follows. There's a few too many to read out, but it's nations such as Great Britain, USA, India, New Zealand, to, to just name a few. The series as a whole was shown off at an inaugural event in Dubai. At the event, the Sheikh stated, I promise a spectacular show, which is A1 Grand Prix. Its elements are exciting racing and entertainment for everyone, young and old. I'm doing this for my country and hope to showcase Dubai to the world in the best light possible. This project is perfect for my nation. At this event, the new cars for the series were also unveiled. It was decided that the cars would be standardized across all teams on the grid, similarly to how they do it in Formula 2 and Formula 3 today. The Lola B05-52 was decided on as the spec car that would end up being used for the first three seasons of A1GP. The car was powered by a 3.4 litre V8 SciTech engine capable of delivering 520 horsepower. They were extremely durable engines because one engine had to last the team a whole season and the series also had a deal to run Cooper tyres. Similarly to how DRS gives an aerodynamic advantage to encourage overtaking in Formula 1, the A1GP cars had a power boost button on the steering wheel. By changing the engine's parameters, the system could give the driver additional power over limited time during the race and this increased the engine's output from 520 brake horsepower to 550 brake horsepower meaning drivers could take a page out of Super GT's book by licking the stamp and sending it. By the opening race weekend of the championship 25 of the 30 franchises had been purchased, 83% filled is very promising for a startup series and the grid was also filled with many famous faces for the first season including ex-F1 driver Nelson Piquet Jr, ex-F1 driver Scott Speed, ex-F1 driver Karun Chandok and current IndyCar driver Will Power. But would this impressive set of drivers be able to produce some good racing? 
Six million viewers tuned in across the world to witness the opening round of the A1GP season on the 25th of September 2005 at Brands Hatch in Kent, which, fun fact, is actually my local track. The qualifying format for A1GP was very unique, so the whole qualifying was split into four 10-minute sessions with each car permitted an outlap, a hot lap, and an in-lap. The fastest times from the first two sessions were compiled and decided the starting order of the sprint race. Similarly, the fastest times from the second two sessions were compiled and decided the starting order for the feature race. Sprint races were 24 minutes long, plus a lap. They began with a rolling start, including a mandatory pit stop, which similarly to Formula 1 nowadays, only included tyre changes, no refuelling. And drivers were permitted to use the power boost I was telling you about earlier, four times during the race. And the feature races were 69 minutes, oh <laughs> well, hey, and one lap extra. These began instead with a standing stop, start and included two mandatory pit stops and the drivers were permitted to use the power boost eight times during the race. So to kick off the season, Nelson Piquet Jr. took A1 GP's first ever pole position for A1 Team Brazil. Piquet set the fastest time over the entirety of the sessions with a 114.965 in his third run around the international circuit layout. Piquet Jr. continued his dominance, winning both the sprint race and the feature race comfortably, also getting the fastest lap, which meant that he took home the full 21 points for the weekend for Team Brazil. 10 points for each win and one point for the fastest lap. For the rest of the season, consisted of 10 more rounds, each with a sprint race and an endurance race. After a successful first season of A1GP, it was announced on the 29th of September 2006 that The Shake was to sell his position as chairman and director of A1GP. His share in the organisation of A1GP was transferred to RAB Capital, and that's finalised in December of the same year. So this man I'm about to talk about has, a, has an interesting last name. I believe it's Tony Texera. That's how I'm going to pronounce it, but I could be wrong. He's a South African diamonds entrepreneur, and he took control of the series in 2006 after the Sheikh gave up his position. He was previously involved with the championship, but in a lesser role, and he would eventually lead it to liquidation in 2009. Texera stated before the first season of A1GP, If you take that we are bringing in China, India, Pakistan, Turkey, USA, and Europe, and you only look to take 5% of those nations' population watching A1GP, then you're sitting on 300,000 people watching the Grand Prix. Due to the worldwide reach of the series, with audiences feeling a sort of nationalistic loyalty towards each team, especially with huge markets such as the US, after the first five races of the inaugural season, viewing numbers were averaging around 6 to 8 million per race. But even with these high viewership numbers, CEO at the time, Pete De Silva, reported a loss for the initial season. And to add to this, through season two and three, these viewing numbers began to slowly decline too. And by season four, Tixera decided that the series was overdue for an extreme change. On the 11th of October 2007, A1GP and Ferrari announced a six-year collaboration on the new generation of A1GP cars. In retrospect, six years was, was quite ambitious. But the new powered by Ferrari A1GP cars were a modification of the Formula 1 Ferrari F2004 chassis that dominated the 2004 F1 Championship. With a 4.5 litre V8 Ferrari Maserati collaboration engine, pots in the back to provide the grunt of 600 brake horsepower. So this car had a higher power level than the old Lolas, but they were also 40 kilos heavier. The car was officially revealed in Southern England and driven for the first time by famous ex-McLaren driver and all-round racing legend John Watson in an inaugural event in May 2008. Since Michelin were quite buddy buddy with Ferrari at the time, especially in Formula 1, before tyres were standardised across all Formula 1 grid with Pirelli, they were contracted in to supply the tyres for the new A1 GP cars. These new cars were developed and tested for over 5,600 kilometres before starting a single race. So this was good for a long-term plan as they hoped it would make sure that they'd ironed out all of the possible niggles that they may have with a new engine implementation. Don't worry though, the original A1 GP Lola powered cars were not scrapped. They were instead sold on to the Euro Series 3000 for the 2009 season that had affiliation with GP2, but they again sold it onto another startup championship in 2014 titled Formula Acceleration 1. This championship had a similar concept to A1 GP in the fact that the drivers would race for their own country rather as a team. It was announced in December 2014 that the championship would merge with AutoGP, formerly Euro Series 3000, for the 2015 season with the eventual champion winning an F1 test. 
However, two rounds into the Auto GP season, it also folded due to lack of entrance. It seems like these cars just couldn't catch a break. The 2009-2010 A1GP season would have been the fifth season of the A1GP series. However, due to the series' financial issues, none of the nine originally scheduled rounds actually took place and the series fell apart in a very disrespectful manner and left all 20 teams involved hung out to dry. The new Ferrari involvement was intended to ease some of the concerns regarding A1GP's ongoing financial viability. The continued input of existing backers and the platform's ability to attract sponsors also helped, but sadly it didn't really work out in the end and even after a financial restructuring by Texera, each race of the 2009-10 season were cancelled one by one and the corporation went into administration in June of 2009. So A1 GP as a series was actually split into two companies. A1 Grand Prix Operations went into administration with 100 million pounds of debt and A1 Holdings entered compulsory liquidation with creditors claiming more than 300 million pounds. Both companies owed money to a number of national motor racing teams and also the Australian government. So to conclude, in many ways, such as the non-refueling rule, A1GP as a concept was far ahead of its time. Another example of this is the fact that the series even had its own YouTube channel where it posts practice, qualifying and race highlights back in 2007 when YouTube had only been around for about two years. To put this into perspective, F1 only really started doing this at the beginning of the 2017 season, meaning A1GP did this 10 years prior and shows that they had extreme foresight and their vision for the future was right on the money. Although A1GP eventually did fail, could we possibly see a return of something similar in the future? Definitely wouldn't be under the same branding as all the cars have now been sold, but possibly just a similar idea being implemented in a different way, such as the XFL in the American football world. Most recent news of A1GP is the A1GP Ferrari powered cars are to return in a new Pan-African series in 2020-2021 called the Afrix GP. The cars are being modified with higher cockpit sides for greater head protection and Xylon side intrusion panels but there's very little information on the series and it's been sitting idle for a few years now and especially with coronavirus now going on in the world I think it's gonna just keep being pushed back and back well that is a comprehensive history of a1 GP I hope you uh, all enjoyed the video hearing how it began its rise to fame and its eventual fall to infamy if you enjoyed this style of video it took me ages to make so as i said at the beginning i'd really 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 appreciate it if you could slap a like on it if you remember a1 gp if you remember actually watching it in person let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it uh, if you think they should bring it back and what you generally think of the series if you did enjoy this video make sure you subscribe to my channel i release new videos very very often and i'll see you later bye guys